Allison, I walk by this lawn. I see it with one set of eyes, but you see it with a whole different set of eyes. That could be true. With my business, Tracks and Roots, I work on teaching people how to identify all kinds of different wild edible plants. And one of the biggest takes away they have with the classes is just how much is out here that you can actually eat. So in this lawn, what can I eat? Well, there's yellow wood sorrel growing right over there. And sometimes I'll see pepperweed here mm -hmm. and dandelion and also cat's ear which is a dandelion look-alike. Sounds like there's a salad that I'm walking by. <laughs> yes, there definitely is. <laughs> and then we also have other types of plants that are edible yes, that we walk right. by. Yes, So what do we have here? So in here you have wild grape. Oh, I and see. You can see it has heart-shaped leaves mm -hmm. that have some teeth on it. Right, and here's some hanging down right here. Yes, that's right. So that's a vine, and there's lots of different vines in the woods. So how do you tell the difference? Well, here's one. This is porcelain berry. Uh huh. And this is an invasive plant from Japan. Oh my. And it's actually uh, blue mm -hmm. when it ends up being ripe. But it does have heart shaped leaves. I see that. Mm hmm. So it's pretty easy to confuse with wild grape. The fruit on this one actually goes up mm -hmm. and doesn't hang down. Right, because the grapes are hanging down. Yes. But this one pops up and the leaves are shiny there, I see too, where the grape leaves are matted. That's right. So it's important to know your plant ID. Yes, that's right. I emphasize to my students in my classes that they need to be 100% sure they have the right plant before they consume any of it. I could see because eating the wrong plant could cause some problems. Yes, that's yes. right. <laughs> but we've also got a mulberry, which is a favorite plant of mine. Yes, that's right. Mulberry is right there and the leaves are poisonous. When you break a stem, you can see the milky sap coming mm -hmm. out, and that's an indicator that it might be poisonous. But you can eat the fruit when ripe, and the fruit can be yellow, white, or even like a purple color, even a black. Mm -hmm. The sap is a wonderful way to identify it, but also the, the leaf has a variable shape to it as well. Yes. Yeah, some right. of them are shapes of mittens and such. Yes. But. but down underneath here, we've got some more plants. So what down here is edible? So there's violet right here, and mm -hmm. that has a heart-shaped leaf. Uh -huh. as well and that has a very nice mild flavor right kind of like lettuce it's you can add it into a salad or saute it a little bit throw it in a frittata Ooh, sounds or yummy. just eat it plain yes yeah. it's, it's one of my personal favorites and then the flowers are very pretty they actually have five petals with one petal that's significantly smaller than the others mm -hmm. looks very pretty on a cake or even on, a, on top of ice cream or on a salad the Victorians used to roll them in sugar and place them on their confections. Oh, I can see that. Yeah, so fun. <laughs> but what else do we have down here? Because we've got an array of plants. So. Yes, so there's Indian strawberry with the three leaves. Mm -hmm. And that looks very similar to wild strawberry. So I, I really like teaching that one so people know this is edible as well. You don't have to worry. Mm -hmm. If you see something that looks like strawberry, it, it is as edible. Does it taste like a strawberry? No, it's not sweet at all, but okay. you can still eat it. When you break it open, it's white on the inside. Okay. It, it does have some vitamin C and different, you know, it has some health benefits. It's great on a salad, just mixing it in. And I have found that children love eating it. Oh, fun. Yes, yeah. they can look for them and find them in the lawn and eat them. Yes. That's great. Well, I have a question then. Of the flavor, is that the important part of these edible plants or is it more the nutrients? Well, I, I guess it's a combination. Usually, a lot of the wild plants do have more vitamins than the this kind of brought at the store because they're fresher and they're out in the wild competing with each other. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them do have particularly good flavors though, so it, it's just a variety. <laughs> well, we've talked some vines and we've talked some plants, other plants. What about trees? So we'll be walking down the trail a bit and we'll find hickory and then we'll find wild cherry as well. Okay, well, <laughs> let's get going. Okay. Do you have any plants with hackberry? Anything with hackberry? No? Uh, no, no. I've never used hackberry before. Oh, okay. How about maple and such? Yes, actually you can eat the maple leaves. Oh, really? That's interesting. Yeah. I wonder what, because I used to make maple syrup out of the sap. Oh, really? Yes. So, Allison, what's next on our walk? Well, here we have black cherry. Oh, wow. I love this plant. It's great for pollinators. Oh, that's wonderful. Yes. Well, as you can see, the fruit is actually ripe right now. Oh, it looks delicious. That nice dark one right there. Lovely. Just lovely. Mm -hmm. And how long will these be around? A few weeks or 
you know, to be able to come and harvest if I was out in the woods and I needed black cherry? Oh, not very long at all. I mean, you need to get them right away before the birds. Before the birds do. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but what are the con distinguishing characteristics to be able to know that this is a black cherry? So one thing is you can scratch and smell it. Uh huh. And if we can just grab a little twig here, mm -hmm. you can take a little smell. It smells like oh, burnt almonds. It does. Yes, it's a wonderful smell. Oh, it is. And it actually means that it has cyanide in it. Uh -huh. So you don't ever want to eat the leaves or the twigs, but the fruit is edible. You know, at Maymont, we keep these out of the pastures for that very reason. Oh, that's interesting. Well, I noticed on our walk that you picked up some hickory nuts. That's right. You can eat these nuts. Oh, really? Yes. And so this green outer part is mm -hmm. it's actually an outer shell that falls off after right. a couple weeks, and then you'll have the inner shell. And inside the inner shell is the actual nut meat that can, you can eat. Is it good? Is it tasty? Or yes, is it... it's very tasty. And there are many different kinds of hickory nuts in Virginia. And do they all have different flavors? Yes, they all have slightly different flavors. Interesting. Yes. <laughs> well, we've got the fruit and we have the nuts. So what other trees would provide us maybe, I'll say, the leafy end of the spectrum here? Well, over there, there's actually basswood. And you can eat the leaves straight from the tree. Really? Yes. <laughs> so if I'm hungry, I can just pull off a leaf and munch on it. Yes, it's, it's a little bit better in early spring when they're more tender. Mm -hmm. at, at this time of year, they're, they end up being just kind of tough and rubbery a little bit. Oh, I'll save my experiment <laughs> till the spring then. That's a good idea. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Allison, this has been so interesting to be able to learn about vines, about plants that are growing out in our lawns, as well as the trees that just grace our streets and our landscapes, and to know that many of them are edible. Well, thank you for having me. Well, thank you so much, and I appreciate you taking the time to share your expertise with us. You're welcome. It's been very fun.